Hello everyone, Yami Aaron here, and today I'm going to bring you a Fortune Fairy deck profile for you. Uh, it's a little weird, so it has all the Fortune Fairies, you know, and I have my own little twist into it, so we'll be seeing that a little soon. And I even got Quentin Magician, so uh, I decided to spice the Fortune Fairies up a little bit, give it my little take on it. So um, let's start this, shall we? It's a really fun deck, even if you're just, you know, tr trying it out for fun. And it's really cheap, too. You could find it at uh, eBay for, like, 15 bucks. The core deck, at least. So, anyways. First off, we're going to run three Fortune Fairy, uh, what's it called? Hikari. Basically, with this one, when you draw it, you can reveal it to your opponent and then special summon it from your hand. And if it's special summoned by that away... You can target one. <laughs> you can target one, one monster you control. Send it to the graveyard, and if you do, special summon one level one spellcaster monster from your deck. You can only use this once per turn, so it's pretty amazing. With this one, you could either bring out a fag veiler because it's also a level one spellcaster, or you could bring it back itself to fill up your grave. So, really nice main monster in the deck, if anything. Uh, another one. Oh, sorry about that. Fortune Fairy N. With this one, when you draw it, I mean, that's basically going to be the same effect for all of them, so I might stop reading that one. So you draw it, reveal it, special summon it, and if it's special summoned by this way, you can target one set card on your opponent controls, destroy it, and then pretty badass. Level 2. So all the Fortune Fairies basically just keep on growing. The first one was level 1 which had, had a level 1 effect, and this one was level 2, and this one, well, I guess you can you can guess what this one's going to be. Fortune Fairy Who, uh, reveal it, special summon it from the hand when you draw it, and then, then you can target one of your banished spellcaster monsters, add it to your hand, and yeah, pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. I run three of everything, so it keeps the deck moving nicely, you know what I mean? So... I guess you can imagine what's coming up next. <laughs> this one has actually saved me a, a, a good amount of times. Well, actually one time that I remember really recently. So with this one, uh, you draw it, reveal it, special summoning. And you can target one other face-up monster on the field. Banish it until the standby phase of your next turn. You can only use this effect once per turn. So, let me tell you a quick little story. My opponent had Utopia the Lightning with power of the guardians with two counters on it so that right there if you know about all that that's pretty good board right there so i drew into this one i banished utopia the lightning got rid of its material got rid of it uh, power of the guardians and then he came back my, on my next turn with just 25 base attack so honestly oh what's her name sui sui was a game changer right there Really good card to have for a little emergency, if you will. I mean, I pretty much lucked out with that, <laughs> if anything. So so now with the level 5, we have Fortune Fairy Anne. Uh, when this card is special summoned from the hand, you can banish one spellcaster from your deck. So, I mean, whenever I do this, I only go for the level 7, which, I mean the level 6. Which is the one I'll be showing you right now. <laughs> Which actually looks like the character she's the decked on. Decked on? The character who uses this deck in the show. Which is Carly, Kyma, Carly Carmichael. And this is Fortune Fairy Chi. Uh, when this card is special summon from the hand. You can make each player draw one card. While not necessarily a good effect to give your opponent more cards. But... You activate its effect, you draw into a fortune fairy, boom, you get another summon. So, honestly, I like to run it at three. Even though it kind of, you know, messed me up last time because my opponent drew into a drowning mirror force. So that is it for the fortune fairies themselves. Here's some support I like to add to them, which is three chocolate magician girls. Uh, once per turn, you can discard one spellcaster. Also, they're all spellcasters, so no problem there. 
Um, discard one spellcaster monster, draw one card. So, you know, activate its effect, discard a spellcaster, draw, draw into this, bloop, another body. So that is fantastic right there. So um, if this card is targeted for attack, you can you can target one spellcaster monster you control in your graveyard. You don't control. You have it in your graveyard, and then except for this one, and special summon it, change the attack to it, and if you do, its attack becomes half its current attack. So has some protection, you know. So run three of that just for the you know draw power because you know it's pretty nice. And if we're talking about easy easy summoning, I run three, the tricky. With this one, you can special summon it by from your hand by discarding one card. Doesn't have to be a spellcaster. Doesn't have to be anything really, just a card. So three of that just for a good easy special summoning. And then I like to run not necessarily for its effect, <laughs> effect bailer. I run two effect bailers because we do go into some synchro plays for our fortune lady because it's a fortune lady, not a fortune fairy. Um, every I think yeah. So I mean, with this one, you pretty much know what it does. So during your during your opponent's turn, if they bring out a monster with a good ass effect, send it to the grave to negate its effect. So since the fortune fairies don't really have a boss monster, and they have a bunch of different attributes, I think they have all of the, all of the attributes. I run a arch nemesis. Frodo's. This one's really amazing. So, you cannot normal normal summon or set. You must special summon it from the hand by banishing three monsters with different attributes from your graveyard and or face up on the field. Cannot be destroyed by card effects. You can declare one type, you know, one attribute. <laughs> Destroy all monsters on the field with that attribute. Also, the next turn, neither player can special summon monsters with that attribute. So it is a game changer right there. You go up against Light Swarms, bam, all their lights gone. And what else can I think of? I can't think of much. So honestly, really good win condition for the Fortune Fairies. I know someone added Exodia for for a win condition. I mean, that's that's not that good. But this one, ooh, Arch Nemesis Frodo's. And I just finished playing Resident Evil 3. Ooh, it's great right there. So that is it for the monsters, as Now going on with the spells, and might as well say this. There's like three different spells for the Fortune Fairies. I run three Miracle Stone. With this one, you if uh, you can only control one of these, which kind of sucks. But um, all spellcaster monsters you control gain 500 attack and defense for each Fortune, mon fortune Fairy monster you control with different names. Once per turn... When an attack is declared involving uh, your fortune fairy monsters, you can draw one card. So, you attack, or they're getting attacked into, draw a card, and then what do you know? It's a fortune fairy. Boom, body. That is amazing right there. So, honestly, a really good card to have, even despite the fact that you can only have one. But, that's why we run it at three. So... Second card, I only run this one at two, and it's called Unacceptable Results. If you control a spellcaster, that I mean that can go either for Chocolate Magician, the Tricky, as long as it's a spellcaster, and you got a Fortune Fairy in your hand, you can special summon this. It's good if you open up with uh, uh, like a level five or higher, which you can normal summon it. So honestly, really good. So I just run that at two, and then the last Fortune Fairy spell. Lucky Loan, I used to run this at 2, but I took it down to 1 just because I could add Chocolate Magician. Another one, at least. So with this one, you can target one Fortune Fairy monster you control. Special Summon one Spellcaster from your hand or deck. See, it doesn't have to be Fortune Fairy. One Spellcaster with a level that is lower from that. And then you're ex then you're just exclusively amount to Spellcaster monsters for the rest of the turn. And you can only activate one Lucky Loan per turn, which is okay, because we only run one. <laughs> and now, this one, since we also go into Fusion Play, I like to run two Magical... Wait, what? Magical... Wait. Magicalized Fusion. There you go. That's nice. That, that were nice. 
So basically this one, Fusion, summon one Spellcaster Fusion Monster from your extra deck by banishing Fusion Material listed on, on it from the field or the graveyard. You can only activate this once per turn. So I ran this at 3, now I run it at 2 to add that third Chocolate Magician, which is funny. So, since we need more win condition in this deck, which you can't get enough of, I run three. Uh, that's right, I repeat three. Uh, shoot, I want to get this nice and perfect. There you go. Three, United We Stand. It is no longer limited. It is at full force at three. So with this one, equip it to a monster. It gains 800 attack and defense for each face-up monster you control. So... With this one, they're pretty much swarming the field. So if you get three and you equip it to one, it pretty much has at least 3,600 3, at that point. So, And you can you can control more than one. So it's not strict or anything. So you can get lucky with this one. Even go for an OTK if you will. And then I like to run... I mean, I could, you could probably switch these with, like, some Pot of Desires or something. Something more expensive, but I don't know. I like to run two Pot of Avarice. Also not limited anymore, so that's fantastic. Uh, and you can target five monsters in your graveyard, shuffle them into the deck, and then draw two. Which you draw, where it's a Fortune Fairy, pop another body. So, I mean, pop another body, that sounds kind of like a murder. No, you bring out another monster, yo. And then a couple of one-ofs. I like to add card destruction because, you know, you discard your hand and draw the same amount of cards. And voila, there's some fortune fairies. They get summoned, yo. So that's pretty cool. And then one monster reborn for anything I un accidentally dumped out. I'm trying to bring it back. So that is it for the spells. And pretty much that is it for the deck main deck, if anything. Because I don't run any traps in this one. So that is that. Time to move on to the extra deck with all the extra deck of monsters. So, I run two. Quintin Magician. I, I know it's supposed to be like Quintet Magician. But I like Quintin Magician because I got a friend named Quintin. So, that being said, uh, you must fusion summon this. Uh, its material is five spellcasters, so it's pretty easy, kind of, in a way. If this card is fusion summoned using five spellcasters with different names, which is pretty easy to do with this deck, I'm not even going to lie. You can destroy all cards your opponent controls. This face-up card on the field cannot be tributed, so no kaijus can get to it. No lava golems. And then what else? If, um, did I say, yeah. And also cannot be destroyed by card effects, so no mirror force. <laughs> Pretty neat. So that is Quintin Magician, yo. And also I run two, but only one has shown up. I run two, fortunately, every. This is pretty cool because it starts out with 28 attack, 2800 attack, but each one of your standby faces, you increase it, so it's going to get strong. And then also once per turn during your standby phase, increase its stars, so it gains uh, 400 for each star it has. And then target one face-up monster your opponent controls, and then what does it do? It banishes or it destroys? Um... Mm. Yeah, you can banish one of your opponent's monsters. So that is amazing right there. And if this card is destroyed or in your graveyard, you can banish one of their spellcaster. Plop, bring it back out. So that is just amazing right there. So oh, two fortune fairies. And then mm, fortune ladies, I mean. And also going for some link plays, I run one code talker. Has saved my life a couple times. Because now if you just bring out two fortune fairies, they're pretty much at zero zero. So I like to have code talker right there to buff them up a little bit. Also cannot be destroyed by card effects or battle as long as it points to a monster. Then we run one nightmare unicorn, which is, um, I mean, that's a staple, right? You should all know that. And then one Borlo Dragon, pretty powerful. One Saryuja, Saryuja, yes, yeah, Skull Dread. And then one Topologic Cerebros, Cerberos, yeah. I mean, this is just more for wing conditioning, if anything, because they're all Link 4, Link 3, and Link 2. Just to get more bodies out into the field, because while they don't necessarily swarm, they do get there out fast. I mean, that is swarming. But, you know, not fast enough. So, 
with that being said guys i hope you enjoyed maybe you want to try out this deck one day i mean uh it's okay uh it's i'll give it about a good 10 out of i mean 10 no I'll give it a good 8 out of 10 because it is fun to see what you're gonna draw into next you know you never know so it's a fun little mystery um well yeah. with that being said guys i hope you enjoyed leave a like if you did give me your feedback and then i'll get back to you yeah that's all about it so see you in the next one take care